In this video we're going to look at options on the image processing dialog window that relate to principal component analysis. And the idea of principal component analysis is that we can transform a data set for which noise is a significant component and remove that noise so we end up with a data set where the signal is the most significant component and so we see images or if we form spectra at pixels we see spectra that have shapes that are consistent with what we would expect from a spectroscopic measurement. The options on the image processing property page that we will focus on are the way a PCA calculation is specified in terms of the number of scans and the number of abstract factors and also the different options that relate to how a PCA calculation is performed. When we perform a PCA calculation we need to specify the number of scans and this will determine the size of the PCA calculation that will be performed. If we look at a data set, and these represent a set of images that are acquired at different binding energies and there are 65 images. So we could specify the number of scans to be 65. The problem with that is that it would take longer to perform than if we specified 12. But if we specify 12, we may not have enough precision to calculate abstract factors as accurately and precisely as we need to represent these data. So there's a compromise in choosing the right size for the given data set for the number of scans. So in this case, let's try 20. If I specify 20, this means that I'm going to do a, a calculation based on 20 images. Even though there are 65 images in total, and when I overlay these images in the active tile, I've got 65 images that will be part of this calculation. And then I can perform a principal component analysis by pressing one of these buttons here. And the buttons are different by virtue of the scaling that will be performed on these images prior to doing a PCA. So what I will do to illustrate the speed of calculation of a PCA is to use the optimum scaling which tries to reduce the influence of noise on the calculation and therefore this is my first option that I would go to when performing a PCA. It's possible that scaling could cause problems but for a general data set where there's a reasonable amount of signal then this is a good option to try. So I'll press optimum scale and then wait for the PCA to complete. So what has happened is 20 abstract factors at most have been calculated and this means that I can now inspect the abstract factors and try and understand how many of these are significant to these data I mean these should have signal that is obvious so I see here signal that is obvious there's a range of intensities so this represents an abstract factor that is of significance to the data the second abstract factor this also is obviously significant to the data. The third, well it might be significant to the data, not entirely sure here, this could be noise. The fourth, again, it's not entirely clear whether this will be of significance or not, but by the time I get to the fifth one I'm starting to feel more comfortable that these are in fact noise. You can see that the limits are symmetrical, so there's a certain symmetry within this image that makes you believe that what we have is a noise component. So I would say for these data, at least for a first guess, is that I've got one, two, three, possibly four components. So these represent the principal components that have been calculated from the data set based on a calculation that it has projected 65 images into a 20 image data set and then the calculation is performed on the 20 images that are a consequence of this projection operation. And that in itself needs some explanation. So the next thing I will do is explain what I mean by a projection in terms of images and in fact in terms of vectors. Each image in this data set is considered to be a vector and the PCA performed on these vectors is a vector operation. So it's worth having a look at what we mean by a vector. And we can do this in simple terms by looking at what we mean by vectors in a three-dimensional space. 
and then what we mean by projecting a vector onto a subspace. In this case, we've got a three-dimensional space that is defined by three axes, i, j, and k, and the coordinates x, y, and z are the weightings that are given to each one of these coordinate axes so that we arrive at a point in three-dimensional space. We can draw a line from the origin to that point, and so we have a vector. And this has magnitude and it has direction. Now, if we want to project this vector onto a subspace, the subspace in this case would be this plane. It's a two-dimensional plane and we've got a three-dimensional vector and when we perform a projection what we do in the case of this example is that the z-coordinate is set to zero so we end up with a vector that now lies in the xy plane. The problem with this discussion so far is that the vectors are being described using a Cartesian coordinate system that has no relationship with the data itself. So if the data set as a whole has a natural direction, if the appearance of the majority of images were similar and there were only some small variations, then the mean image would provide a, one means of saying that that would be one of the coordinate axes for a coordinate system that would have some relationship to the data itself. Now PCA is much more subtle than that. And so the calculation that is performed is based on a least squares principle and not simply by summing images. But the idea is essentially the same, is that we do some kind of transformation of our coordinate system so that when we describe our data set, it is in terms of coordinate axes that have some relationship to the data. So one way of doing this would be to rotate the coordinate axes and try and align the coordinate axes more sympathetically with the data vectors. So once we've done a rotation and we attempt to get the plane onto which we wish to project our data vector closer to the data vector, then you can see that the projection onto that plane will have less error, that this, this projected vector is more representative of the data vector. Now when we have multiple vectors in the case of an image data set, we're not going to get all the vectors to align, which is why we get more than one abstract factor that looks different. The orientation of this plane onto which this three-dimensional vector is projected is significant in terms of the precision of a calculation if we replace data vectors by these projection vectors. And this is the basis for specifying a 20-dimensional space. That this 20-dimensional space, in terms of the number of scans, represents the equivalent of this plane in a multi-dimensional vector space that potentially could have 65 in terms of this image data set there could be 65 dimensions but not all of those dimensions are really significant in terms of these data vectors so if we choose a dimension for a vector space and we have 20 linearly independent vectors into which we can project the 65 vectors then we end up with a subspace that is smaller and therefore more time efficient when we do the PCA calculation. Over specifying the dimension of the calculation of the PCA vectors is important because we would like to make sure that we actually have a set of projection vectors that are truly representative of all the data vectors. And this will happen if we have a limited number of genuine underlying shapes within the data set. So 20 in this case was a reasonable calculation for a PCA and we demonstrated that in terms of creating four potentially significant abstract factors. And this is where the next parameter comes in, the number of abstract factors. The same concept applies that what we're doing is we're specifying a subspace that is now defined by the PCA calculated vectors. So when we've calculated that there are four significant abstract factors, if we specify there are four significant abstract factors in the data set, then this means that we will project our entire image data set of 65 images onto a four-dimensional subspace that is spanned by these four abstract factors that are equivalent to a four-dimensional plane, as it were, within this 64-dimensional space and we can project our data vectors into that and everything that doesn't project into that four-dimensional space will consider to be noise. And that is the basic principle 
of how noise reduction by PCA is performed. In the case of our image data set, we have established that there are four abstract factors that are calculated by optimum scaling when we use 20 scans. So what we'll do now is perform the process of noise reduction by making use of these two parameters and applying the predict optimum scale. And I'm matching the optimum scale prediction method with the optimum scale that was used to calculate these four abstract factors. Overlay these in the active tile and we need to have the raw data. So I've just reset the processing for these VAMAS blocks. And then I will also change the display setting. So I do a 3D plot where I've got a front plane and a back plane that are scaled according to 50% and 40%. And this will show a plot of this data cube that we're about to process. So this is the data before any processing is performed. And now if I predict using optimum scaling and four abstract factors, so these images are all projected into a four dimensional space defined by the four most significant abstract factors, I then produce noise reduced data as a consequence of doing this PCA calculation.